Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. However, what I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and if I've done my editing job right, you should be watching me in black and white right now. If not, welcome to Glorious Technicolor. <coughs> As you will have been able to tell from the thumbnail, the title, and if you've read any of it, the description, I am finally getting around to filming my review of the new Kaleidos Escape Pod palette and the Moon Cruiser highlight purchased for me by my lovely husband, owner of the Declutter Sock. So, if you want to find out exactly how this palette performed, which colours I used, what this looks like in glorious Technicolor, assuming you haven't already seen that now, and then my darlings, you have got the best seat in the house. As I have said for some considerable time, have heard echoed on other less imaginative places, but am now accompanied by Sammy the Sloth Straw. Grab a drink. Grab a snack. Put your feet up and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. Observant viewers will notice the multicoloured box that has been there for a few films is not there. That's because I'm finally getting the time after all the collabs and the Zodiac update for Aries. Finally getting the time to do a look with this. It has been so damn tempting since this arrived to use it. Uh, Loving Yourself Isn't Vanity, It's Sanity by Andre Gide. Make up on the bright side. Write your own brief letter, send it to us, and we'll print it out and send it with future orders. It's interesting. There's big fluffy bubble wrap. And then inside it, there's smaller bubble bowl wrap. Save that for the hubby, he loves popping that stuff. So, the Escape Pod and the Moon Cruiser Highlight. These were, of course, gifts from the Hubster. This is the Moon Cruiser Highlight. Take my little plastic sheet off. It's actually quite a firm plastic sheet, which is very comforting. And this is the kind of got a pinky bluey shift to it. I don't know if there you go. Look, there's a pink and there's the blue. Hopefully that's showing up. And of course the escape pod. Now, regular viewers know I've got the five skinny. Um, eyeshadow palettes. I haven't got their first one. The big, uh, I think it was a 15 pan sort of bluey under the sea type palette. If anybody's got that and doesn't want it, hello! <laughs> Love to take it off your hands. But, this is the escape pod with its, oh look at that packaging. Oh. Again, very firm, very firm piece of plastic and of course this is what she looks like. The first one has escape, like the escape button on your keyboard. Top row are all mattes, middle row and this first one are shimmers. And then there's four more mats. So there's a good matte to shimmer ratio for people who need mats. 
I haven't swatched this because well, swatches don't really tell you anything except what the colours are going to look like on my skin tone. So unless you're my skin tone, it's not really very helpful. Um, so I'm going to start off just by chucking these straight on and seeing what happens. You know what I'm like folks, I, I don't think these things through, I just chuck stuff on and see what happens. Sometimes this is a good move, other times not so good. We'll find out today which one we're hitting. Now, uh, this is still a teaching channel. By virtue of that, I go at a speed that beginners can keep up with me. It's also a speed that people like me who have chronic pain can keep up with me. Now normally, because I've been getting up at half four in the morning with the hubster, because he's on earlier's, normally I'm filming at about half six, seven o'clock. It's currently two o'clock in the afternoon because it's taken this long for my pain pills to kick in. Yeah which means they're probably going to kick out again before I finished filming. Um, I'm going to insert a clip in a moment where I talk you through the difference between hooded eyes and deep set eyes. If at any point you want to speed me up because you've watched my films before and you know exactly what this next clip is or you just want to see how the palette performs, there are speed widgets on YouTube. It's either up there or down there depending on what device you're on. Um, feel free to use them. But in one of my pain somnia moments I either shop or I research. And on a research moment um, I discovered that I didn't have hooded eyes which is what I'd thought initially because hooded eyes and deep set eyes have similar issues with how the eyeshadow wears through the day. Um, by virtue of which I have now discovered that I have deep set eyes not hooded so I insert a clip in just a moment explaining how to tell whether you have hooded or deep set eyes and what the workarounds are for both because although the way the eyeshadow wears through the day is very similar the actual method of applying the eyeshadow is slightly different uh, for those of you who've asked how I've prepped my face today, washed, moisturised, haven't SPF'd because I'm not intending on leaving the house today, uh, and because I'm not leaving the house I'm not going to use my antiperspirant primer, I save that for times when I go out. So uh, I'm actually trying out this I Heart Revolution Tasty Peach. It's a mattifying priming spray. Bizarrely it has one lid, two lids. I guess that's so it doesn't leak. Uh, I don't know. But it smells really nice and it is very refreshing. Um, and it, it dries with a slight tackiness to it. Which obviously is good for when you're applying foundation over the top. As usual, my eye primer is my Crow and Pebble eye primer. I use the shade uh, Blank Page Cotton, which is the white one, because that gives the colours that I'm using, especially when I'm using pastels, as much oomph as possible. Um, she does six different shades at the moment, starting with white. At the other end of the spectrum, you've got black and a very, very deep chocolate brown. And then you've got three more beigey skin tony type shades in between. So you're going to be able to find something that will work for you. She does do half size pots of this. Um, so you can try out you know, a couple of different shades if you're unsure which one will suit you best. Um, I do have a code with them. I don't earn from it. Um, I basically accumulate pebbles which I can then use to offset some cost when I do my next order. Um, and I do order from them a lot because this I think is my third pot that I've gone through. And I have pot number four waiting for when pot number three runs out. So 
uh, once the clip is done, the clips can be very up close and personal, it's just going to be my eyes. Once the clip is done, I'll be back to apply some coloured pigments to my eyelids. Here's your clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Chrome Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's... It goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black, then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get so what are the workarounds if you have hooded lids get a brush something like this or a pencil brush sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow so just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows, and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies and I am back. I'm going to use quite a small blending brush, whatever the width of the head of the brush, 
that's how far it'll blend the shadow out. You can see I've got a little bit of pink staining here and here from a look that I did yesterday. But it doesn't matter because we're about to put some colours on anyway. Ooh. You could, if you just did that bottom row of mattes, you could get quite a good neutral look. But we know that ain't going to happen, right? Right. Uh, right, which is deeper, the blue or the purple? The blue, okay. So I'm going to start with the blue to put through the crease. Because the deepest colour looks furthest away. So if you are recreating a new crease, it'll give that illusion that that part of the eye is, is more distant. Uh, there's a fair bit of kick up in this, as you can see, but I just leave the kick up on the pan, pick it up next time round. Holding the brush right at the end, so I put as little pressure on as possible. Uh, and we're going to do the Viennese Waltz Blend, which is natural turns, a flicker when we get there, and reverse turns to come back again. I always start on the outside edge because if it does deposit a huge mm. chunk of pigment, shush phone please. You've been quiet all damn morning, now behave. If it does deposit too much pigment, it's much easier to blend it out when your nose isn't in the way. And I'm going to start just above my natural crease. And just slowly start applying this blue which I had to just double check I had gone into the blue because it's looking very indigo-y on screen. Hopefully when I put the purple on it will look more blue but at the moment it's definitely looking indigo. Now the reason I do the Viennese Waltz Blend is because I'm 46 years old I've lost over 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds. So the skin on my eyelids moves and by doing this we're very gently moving the skin around in both directions so we don't get telltale white stripes or barcoding. But you know, I know teens who've always been slim that have very very flexible eyelids like this. Um, I just think this is a much kinder, more efficient way of blending than doing the windscreen wiper is. Because this is such a long handle, I'm actually going to hold it a little bit further up. Just so I've got a little bit more control over it. It's ridiculously long, this handle. But I'm still putting very little pressure on my actual eyelid. Okay. I know a lot of people, I, I don't normally watch reviews of palettes before I've bought, you know, before I've got them myself. I did make the mistake of catching one review um, where they were actually having problems with getting this blue to blend. Now, so far, I don't seem to be having the same issues as them now. They did use a sticky base, which could be the issue. The Chrome Pebble Primer dries down matte, um, but still retains the colour impact and the grabability of a wet primer. Um, it's one of the reasons that I like this primer so much because you don't have to decide whether you're going to set the primer so that you get a nice easy blend or to not set the primer so that you get vibrant colours because um, this dries down to a non-sticky finish but you still get bright colours and I know I think it was Butte Bean I was watching 
was having real problems with this blue so it could be the base she was using or it could be that she was using a um, a looser blending brush it could be because this is such a small dense brush um, because I, I do struggle here and here on both eyes um, where I get dry patches just there so I can actually get real trouble on this area when applying the shadows if my eye is deciding to have a bit of a moment to itself. But you can see I'm actually only going about three quarters of the way along today. But I'm actually quite liking this so far. Now the reason I do both eyes kind of do one colour on one eye and then flip over and do it on the other eye rather than doing one eye completely and then flipping over onto the other eye is because your eyes are not symmetrical. I mean for me for example I've got these super super deep creases just here on this eye which I really struggle with. That's where the eye was pulled around at the ophthalmic hospital when I was five years old. So we're talking over 40 years ago now and my eye being pulled around when I was that young has caused extra damage to it. Um, so it's always wise to sit back, relax your brows and just check that you're getting the same kind of shape both sides because, you know, depending on how your eye is on that particular day, particularly as you get older, if you've got deep set or hooded eyes, you know that some days they can be more deep set than others, depending on how tired you are. Um, with me, with my fibro, my eyes can be quite puffy. Uh, they can be very watery, which can affect how they, um, you know, how puffy they are, for example. Um, so it's always wise to just keep. Keep checking that you've got the same shape both sides. You can see I've done exactly the same shape, but this one looks more curved and this one looks more flat, so I need to bring this one up here a bit. Because obviously this part of my eye is a little bit more swollen today. And I wouldn't have been able to pick that up if I'd already blended other colours in with it. I'm hoping that makes sense for you. Uh, I'm going to clean this brush off on a clean washcloth. I used to use colour switches but they are far too harsh on your brushes, especially natural hair. I mean this is synthetic, uh, but that's not the point. If you treat your brushes well, they'll last you. Uh, I mean I've got a lip brush that I use for my inner corner highlight and my brow that I bought well over a decade ago from eBay and I'm still using it now. So, you know, I've got brushes here that are six, seven years old that I'm still using. So, I'm gonna use the same brush again. This was shade uh, Exoplanet, by the way. I'm now gonna go into Mardi Gras which is the purple. Purples and blues are some of the most difficult colours to create which is why if they're in a palette I'll usually use them the first time I use the palette um, because I like to see how they deal with difficult colours. Now if you're going to be blending two colours together always try and start off with half the brush on the colour you've already laid down and half off of it because what you will find is by doing that you will get a much softer cleaner blend and then start building the colour
and then you get a much smoother, softer blend just there. So there's there's no obvious demarcation line of where one stops and the other one starts. They they just sort of blend and transition into the next colour, which is exactly the look that I wanted for today. Obviously, if you're doing a more editorial look, then you know you you want more straight lines. You'd you do something a little bit different than that. But you all know me. Love me a bit of colour. Can't resist a bit of a play. How I've managed to keep my hands off this for the week and a bit I've had it here, I really, really don't know. Keep, when I'm editing and I keep seeing it behind me um, and I'm like oh I want to play with it I want to play with it but I knew I wanted my first play with it to be on camera um, and unfortunately I used to be able to do a look you know film it all take photographs take it off and then do a second look on the same day but unfortunately my pain levels are so bad now I just I can't do that anymore so I'm, I'm kind of it takes me longer to film um, and whereas like last year I'd have at least nine films stacked up so that if I wanted to take a week off I could um, at the moment I don't have any films as backup um, simply because I'm, I'm not able to film more than one a day and sometimes I go two or three days where I can't film. <laughs> I missed a spot, didn't I? Okay, clean the brush off and I'm now going to go into Flamingo. Pretty Flamingo. Showing my age now. Well, no, not really. That was a 60s song. Mum used to play it a lot. And again, halfway over the purple, halfway over the blue. So the same thing applies when you're blending sideways as when you're blending up. My laptop's just finished updating by the sound of it. Those are blended really nicely together actually. Although I do get the feeling this pink will stain. If ever you do have an issue where um, you've got a colour that doesn't want to blend very well. Don't just say, oh the palette's crap. Because there are a number of different things that you need to try first. The most obvious one is the brush. Because if I was using a more loosely packed blending brush, it would A, take longer to build the colour up. I wouldn't have the same control over the smaller area that I'm doing. But there's a good chance that it may go patchy with a looser brush. Um, a more dense brush will obviously lay the pigment down in a different way. Um, I was watching Bridget from Porcelain review um, a palette last night and she's like oh it's crap it's awful and I'm just like you didn't even try adjusting the variables she didn't try a more densely packed brush that's the first obvious thing to try and then if that doesn't work 
then take it off and try a different primer. Could be that it's not getting on with the primer. I've got, thankfully, my Crow and Pebble primer um, works with 99% of palettes that I've used and loose pigments that I've used. But there are the occasional one where I'll have to drag out my MAC paint pot or I'll have to use shape tape or the new Gerard Cosmetics um, clean canvas eye base. So never just assume that because a palette doesn't work first time that it's the palette's problem. Try a different brush, try a different primer, try a different technique. If it doesn't like blending, try the pat to blend instead of the swirl. There are so many different ways that, yes, you should be able to pick up a palette and have it work like that, regardless of what brush and anything you're using. But that's, that's, that's not how makeup works, you know? Right, I'm going to go into Tango. I don't like criticising other people. Um, but it really frustrated me last night when I was watching Bridget. I, she literally said, oh, I'd love to give you a good review of this palette, but I just can't. And I'm like, you haven't really tried the palette. You, you know. It was so frustrating because she's got quite a big audience. Um... Yeah, this is Tango. I'm not, I can't remember if I told you that or not, the orange. She's got, you know, she's certainly got a much bigger audience than I've got. And I just think that poor indie company, people are going to listen to Bridget and go, oh, I'm not going to buy that because it's crap. When it could be that if she'd tried a different brush, a different primer, a different method of application. I mean, there were pastel shadows as well, so... You know, pastel shadows do perform differently. Um, you do have to be more patient with them in terms of building them up. And in a lot of cases, you can't blend like this, because you'll blend the colour pigment away, just leaving the white base pigment behind. You have to use the pat to blend method, which is where you swirl at first to blend your edges out, then you pick up a little bit more pigment and you pat it on like this, lifting your brush each time to build the colour up. And it's just, it's, it's difficult enough for indie brands to break into the makeup market as it is, but when you've got people like that that don't try and don't understand, it's, I think there's a lot about her. A lot of times when she says stuff, I'm like, well, you haven't tried this and you haven't tried that, or she'll say something and I think, no, Bridget, that's wrong. Um, and I don't think she's done any theory or any makeup research, you know, I, I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination, but I watch Wayne Goss, I watch the Walsh Brothers, um, Walsh Brothers, Welsh Brothers, Welsh Brothers, um, because they are experts and you can learn a lot from them. My friend Laura, who's a painter, I, I watch her because I can learn a lot about colour theory from her. It's only since watching her film that I learned how to blend yellow and purple together without going muddy. You know, you should still be learning. You shouldn't ever think that you know it all because you don't. You know, she's she's clearly not had any makeup training. Listen to me bashing her. Right, I'm going to go into soiree which is the lilac with the escape um, button imprinted in it. I'm going to use this 
to really brighten up this this inner corner here I just regular viewers will know I love supporting indie brands I prefer buying from an indie brand than from a large established drugstore or high-end brand um, I think they are in terms of quality control because their production runs generally are smaller they are a lot tighter on the quality control for things before it leaves and gets sent out to customers um, they certainly have more imagination you know you'll see indie brands whatever colours the indie brands are using now mainstream will be on that in about six months to a year's time um, so I, I find it extremely frustrating when someone disses something that an indie brand has produced with, I mean don't get me wrong it could be that this is a crap palette I haven't tried the indie brand myself but I've used enough pastel shadows to know that they do need handling with kid gloves because the way that they are produced is different they have an awful lot of white as a base pigment and if you're not careful you can end up blending the colour pigment away leaving just the white base pigment if you don't know what you're doing and if you're not careful um, you know, one of the benefits of Painsomnia is that I do an awful lot of reading, research. I look at articles from the 50s and the 60s, um, right up to, you know, new stuff now, to try and make sure that information I'm giving you is correct. Right, I'm going to go in with this really tiny flat brush. Some of these are just stunning. Look at those. That's the first three. And that's the second three. Those two look very similar, but in real life, this one is more pastel and this has a deeper greeny gold sheen to it. Um, I'm going to try applying these dry initially uh, and then I'll see how they go um, using them wet. I've got my Revolution Cucumber Fixing Spray here. You don't have to use a fixing spray, you can use any, any liquid, you know, setting spray, fixing spray, priming spray. This is nearly out. That's good. Just never put a wet brush in a, in a pressed pigment because you'll kill it effectively. Right, I'm going to go into Space Oasis, which is, well, the, okay, these are very softly pressed. Um, so I think actually I am going to skip them dry because there's going to be a hell of fallout on that. So that's wet brush. Right, this ferrule is now wet, so tuck it in your knuckles and spin to dry. Because you don't want moisture getting down here, loosening the glue that holds the bristles, because then you haven't got a brush, you've got a stick. And the reason I like little small brushes like this, is for getting right down into the corner, like this. Ooh. Are these all duochrome? I think they might be. That's pretty. I will try this on a cut crease at some point. But um, I like to use them 
without cutting the crease the first time I try a palette because I want to see how much base pigment opacity they have. I like to see whether they're a topper shade or if they do actually have enough pigment themselves. Now with this eye, because of this creasing, I do have to stretch the eye out. Now the way that I do that to prevent as little damage as possible, take the width of the creasing, same width again, then put my finger on and gently stretch the lid out. And I'm literally only stretching it out far enough to flatten the crease. So that this goes on smoothly and is blended well to the lid and then I'm gently letting go, I'm not just letting go so it flings back. Um, if I didn't do that I would end up with loose pigments building up in those creases and then throughout the day as it dries it would end up getting into my eye and cascading down my face. It gets very very painful. Right, I'm going to go into Galactic Gala, which is the lighter of the two greens. Uh, if you want me to do a neutral look with this palette, let me know and I will try to restrain myself and do a neutral look. Wow, that's pretty. These really are very, very pretty. What is enough? on there to do this eye as well. Oh yeah, it looks like there is. Look at that. And I'm just going to very gently drag the lilac over onto the green. Pretty. Right now, I'm going to go into Amaretto. This is gorgeous, sort of coppery pink shade. You can see I've got much more fallout this side from the mats because this eye moves so much more than the other one does. Again, just blend the edges of those two colours together. Gosh, this is looking pretty. And then I'm going to finish off with Cosmic Cabaret on the very outer edge. Because there's two purple shimmers in the palette. And if you think I'm not using both of them, <laughs> clearly you haven't watched me before. Just to finish off with that little hit of purple just on the outside edge. Now I'm not worried about going too far out because I actually tidy up 
the edges of my look with my cellar water which I'll show you in just a minute. I normally do it off camera but I will show you. That's so pretty. It's going to be difficult to get me to use a different palette now. Right, my cellar water on a pad and you just sweep up to give yourself a nice sharp edge. I don't, yes you could use tape to achieve the same thing. But the way I see it is if the tape is stuck down well enough that powder's not going to go under the edge of it, then it's stuck down well enough that it's going to pull at your skin when you take it off. And we've already discussed about the delicacy of skin. Okay my lovelies. I'm going to pause you while I pop some foundation and bits and bobs on and I will be back to finish this eye look off. As ever for you my darlings, it will be instant. Hello, I am back. Once again I've done soap brows. Um, I used to use the pomades from Revolution but it seems they've stopped doing the coloured ones. So I had to find a different way of doing it, so I think you could still follow me. This is from a indie company called Pink Honey. That's their logo. Focus, thank you. This is their Honey Glue Strawberry Sherbet. I've just got one of the small pots. It has a hole in the middle. Now, they recommend that you wet either this or you spool it. I don't do that, I just put my spoolie straight in and swirl it round and use that to brush my brows up so I get the nice fluffy brow. That leaves them slightly sticky which is great because then when you go in with the other end and put your powder on, the powder has something to stick to. The powder also sets the stickiness so your brows last all day. In case you're wondering, you're welcome. Um, and I used Exoplanet, the indigo blue, uh, on the brows, which is actually really quite lovely. Uh, and I'm going to go in with this flat top brush now into Exoplanet again. And I'm just going to run that along the lower lash line. Regular viewers will know that I can't put anything in my waterline. Uh, I've always had very, very watery eyes anyway. Add to that one of my fibro symptoms is watery eyes. Add to that high pollen count. And the fact that I've got one, two, three trees in my back garden at the moment. Uh, and then I've got like 200 foot of back garden, 200 foot of allotments, railway line, river and a wood the other side when you look out my back window. So, yeah. Pollen is, it's a thing. Right, this is the Tarte Graveyard Girl Palette brush. Love it, because it's flat top like the last one, but it's chunky. Put that at me. <laughs> so it's great for getting under your bottom lashes and smudging shades out. But you can just use an ordinary smudger brush, or um, you could use a, a pencil brush. Or just a thick but small, you know, kind of a brush. But I'm using this one. And I'm going to go into Soiree, which obviously is this lovely lilac. And I'm just going to use that to buff out the lower lash line just 
just to soften the deeper shade make it look a little bit smoky yeah, I like that I like that a lot talking of that 10 year old lip brush here it is and I'm now going to go into my Moon Cruiser highlight and I'm going to pop some of that just up under the tail of my brow there because apparently along with everything else folks your brows sink as you get older as well so by popping a wee bit of lightness under them Gives you a youthful aspect, apparently. See, is that research I was talking about earlier? And I'm going to pop some of this on the inner corner, and I like to bring that along and just blend it in with whatever I've run underneath my eye. I just think that finishes my eye shape off nicely. Um, where I can't put anything on my waterline just kind of completes the look right my beautiful ones I'm going to pause you for one last time I'm going to lob some of this highlighter on my cheeks and various other places uh, put some mascara on put some lipstick on do something with my hair and I'll be back with my finished look and a first impression a review of the new Kaleidos bits. Again, instant. Hey my lovelies, I am back. I have slathered myself in the highlight, which is just stunning. Oh. Uh, the mascara today is my little mini IT superhero looks size that I got. Lippy is one of my Charlotte Tilbury ones from my lovely friend Hedda from the Hedda Gold channel. And this is the Duchess. I'm so lucky she sent me a load of Charlotte Tilbury lippies and they are amazing. She's such a good friend. Uh, the only way I could control my hair today was this love me a bit of a taste. I've just finished this one. This is the cherry version, which is nice. But my favourite is my coconut and exotic tropical one because it makes me feel like I should be on a beach somewhere with a vaguely alcoholic drink in one hand and a good book in the other. Anyway, what do I think of these? This, I have used five of the mattes and four of the shimmers. So far, I am really liking this. I didn't seem to hit the same issue that other people have had with the blue shade. Now, that's either down to the primer or it's down to the type of brush that I used. Um, you will have to play with yours to find out whether it's the brush or the primer or both. Uh, but so far I am really, really liking how this has turned out. They blended beautifully together. It's not exactly the same um, matte and shimmer formula that are in their long, thin palettes. Um, the shimmers are a bit more powdery, a bit more crumbly. Um, I wouldn't want to try and apply those dry because I'd imagine you're going to get hella fallout from them. But the ones in the thinner strips, um, I don't mind using dry. That being said, does it make them a bad product? No, absolutely not. It just means they're a slightly different formula. Um, so far, I am perfectly happy with what I've used. I've used over half the palette so far. Um, I will obviously, now I finally filmed with it, I will obviously continue to play with this 
and keep you updated but so far this gets a definitive thumbs up from moi uh, the highlighter i have one other of their highlighters i have the star surfer which is the pink one uh, as you can see these were in non-reflective packaging it appears this current one is in a reflective packaging that's interesting this is number two this is number five. Oh, this is no2 and this is g05 that's interesting i wonder if that means they're a different formula or just it's a different range look see one's an n and one is a g strange uh, that being said, so far, really liking it. I did apply it wet, as in, I sprayed my face with my mint choc chip slay all day, so I was slightly damp, almost, um, when I applied this, which I tend to do with highlighters anyway. I just find that if you've got any texture, it by, by having a slightly damp face when you apply it. it it tends to not show up the texture as much um, so yeah I really like this so far um, it is a little bit dusty but then a lot of highlighters are it's not an issue I just tap off well before I apply and then go back in and pick up all the loose stuff to do the other side not an issue uh, do I recommend them? yeah if you like the colour scheme and you can afford to get them then I would absolutely say go for it because I have thoroughly enjoyed using both of them. Alright, if you are one of my 4F babies uh, please double check you're still subscribed. Uh, I've noticed that even larger channels such as Taylor Wynn and Nady are also saying when they put a film up they are losing subscribers this is happening to everybody it would appear except for Jimmy Chuck <sighs> conspiracy theory allegedly for entertainment purposes only uh, annoyingly when they do delete you as I have found from when I've been unsubscribed from different channels they still leave your films, or in my case my films for you, in your newsfeed. So it's not obvious that you have been removed. So please double check that. Once you've done that, if you could hit the like button, leave me a comment, maybe even a cheeky little share, that would be lovely. Um, which colours were you drawn to? If you had been sitting here and you'd got that palette in front of you, which colours would you have used to create an eye look with? Would you have gone as completely mad as me? Uh, probably not. Well, there's a few of you who might. I can. I know a few of you who would have been this mad. Um, but yeah, let me know what your favourite colours are. And like I said, if you want me to try and control myself and do a more neutral look with this palette, please let me know and I will attempt my best effort. If, however, you are new here, hi, hello, welcome. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. If you've made it this far through, there must be something you liked. Uh, even if it was just me blethering on about all kinds of nothing. It'd be awesome if you too would like to join the 4F family. It's super easy. We are a lovely, friendly place. You just hit that red subscribe button and turn it grey. Then you ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose yes and all notifications. And you keep saying that every time YouTube give you a pop-up window and ask you the same damn question in a different way. And then hopefully you'll get told, I don't know, one in four of my films, my husband subscribed to me and even he doesn't get notifications for all of my films, so I know that... There are issues. However, talking of my other films, there are an awful lot that you can choose from. Uh, I've got product reviews like this, I've got tutorials like this, 
I've got collabs, I've got challenges, I've got tag films. I even read you my favourite poem. So there's going to be something there to entice you. I've even got one where I talk you to sleep if you're an insomniac, which I'm told is very effective. So if you're looking for a little bit of me time, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, pick a playlist and indulge. Right, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.